Now we're going to talk about the power phase. This phase is a critical and complex part of the paddle stroke. This is where you are applying power to produce forward speed. You want to focus on using all of your muscles during this part of the stroke. Remember, your arms are much weaker than the rest of your body. You want to use the drive of your torso, hips, shoulders, and back to bring yourself forward to a well-placed paddle blade while keeping your knees bent and engaging your legs to produce power. Use the skateboard and cross-country skiing visualization that I mentioned earlier in this course during this phase. Remember, we are planting our paddle and bringing ourselves up to a stationary blade. Think about falling onto your paddle and applying some of your weight to the paddle blade and off of the board during the power phase. Bending at the waist by dropping your hips back in the same motion as sitting down in a chair or doing a squat is also going to be a good visualization that will help you produce power. Concentrate on producing power all the way to the point at which your bottom elbow reaches your torso. We'll talk more about this in the next lesson covering the exit phase. A good drill to work on producing power with your hips and legs and not your arms is to think of your arms as rubbery or jello to get them to relax during this phase. I know this really helped me when I was working on engaging my hips and using them during the power phase. This should help you concentrate on engaging your bigger muscle groups like your legs, core, back, and hips for more power output. Also, grip your paddle very lightly with the tips of your fingers to work on using bigger muscles and not your arms during your slow and deliberate technique practice. This will literally force your body to find another way to generate power because your arms are rubbery, you have a very loose grip, so you have to find that power from somewhere else. Make sure you are applying pressure along a horizontal plane. You will be applying some amount of downward pressure as you drive your hips forward and fall onto the blade, but make sure that the downward pressure is translating to forward board speed. You don't want to lose power by pushing down and not translating that downward vertical motion into a forward horizontal flow. To help you understand this better, let's use the cross-country skiing analogy again. Imagine that a skier places their poles in the snow and thrusts forward with their hips, but in doing so, they apply a greater force downward into the ground with their top hand than they do forward. They would be losing forward power and almost shooting themselves skyward because of the downward force being greater than the forward thrusting force. It's not efficient as they waste their energy downward and not forward. They still need downward force to secure the poles to create the forward thrust. However, they do not want this downward force to be so great that it impedes the forward progress. Paddling is no different. So remember, for the power phase, really try to use that visualization of planting our blade in the water and bringing our body up to the well-set blade. That really helped me when I was trying to figure out how to engage my hips and legs more during this phase. I can't stress it enough. If you're ripping through the water, if you're using your arms, those are small and weak muscles compared to our hips, our legs, and our back, but especially our hips and our legs. You really want to try to engage those muscles during this phase, get them working to produce the most power, speed, and efficiency as possible, and certainly prevent injury. Because if you're just ripping through the water with your arms, your elbow joint, your shoulder joint, your wrists, those are going to have a lot of wear and tear. You're going to probably get injured, and you're certainly not going to be going as fast and efficiently as possible.